Oh no, a new study shows vegan and vegetarian diets increase stroke risk. Okay, everyone, time to throw away your impossible whoppers. I mean, don't throw them away. That'd be wasteful. Um, oh, throw them at me. I'll take them. They're too dangerous to just leave in the trash can. Like, what if your dog eats them? So just send them to me. I'll dispose of them properly. So yes, there was a new study with some news about vegetarian diets. Uh, but no, obviously, this does not mean that vegan or vegetarian diets are suddenly unhealthy. They're not. Um, I say obviously, but it's not going to be obvious to many people who see these headlines and just think, oh, well, I guess I'll just keep eating all the meat I want. No need to try to be healthy, which is why I'm here to help you in case uh, one of these people sees you eating a vegetarian meal and wants to tell you about how you should just give up on life instead. Uh, the research in question is a massive cohort study just published in the British Medical Journal. Uh, I've talked recently about how great cohort studies can be. Um, essentially, it means researchers look at a giant population of people and follow their health over a period of many years to see which populations develop a certain disease. Um, it can show us correlation like People who ride bikes have less acne, but it can't show us causation, like riding bikes gets rid of pimples. That's not a real example, by the way, unfortunately. In this case, researchers looked at nearly 50,000 people and followed them from 1993 all the way till 2001. They split those people up into three groups, uh, meat eaters, pescatarians like myself who eat fish, but no other meat, and vegans and vegetarians. Um, unfortunately, they had to combine those two groups. Those are, they actually have very different diets, uh, but they didn't have enough vegans in the study to allow them to have their own group. So that is something for a future study, and please bear that in mind. Uh, sure enough, they did find that the vegan vegetarian group had a very tiny increase in occurrence of one and only one type of stroke, hemorrhagic. That's the type where a blood vessel just bursts. Um, they found that the vegans and vegetarians stood a total of 20% higher chance of stroke compared to other groups, uh, primarily because of that hemorrhagic stroke increase. So where's the issue here? Those headlines seem accurate, right? Well, the researchers in their study take great pains to point out the context. Meat eaters actually had a 13% increased risk of ischemic heart disease. That's where a blood vessel is blocked off so the heart doesn't get enough blood, which can also lead to stroke. About 85% of all strokes are ischemic as opposed to hemorrhagic, uh, which means that when you look at the actual numbers as opposed to just the percentage increase, eating meat is much, much worse. Uh, compared to meat eating, vegetarian and pescatarian diets led to 10 fewer cases of ischemic heart disease per 1,000 people over 10 years. But the increase in hemorrhagic stroke was equivalent to only three new cases per 1,000 people over 10 years. Three versus 10. Talking about percentages when it comes to increased risk is so tricky that way. For instance, let's say you have to pick one of the following scenarios. Either you get a 90% increased chance of dying in a car accident or a 10% increased chance of dying of heart disease. You can't just go based on which percentage is higher, even if you do think 90% sounds pretty bad. To figure it out, you need to know what your actual risk is of each thing. In this case, I'm going to completely oversimplify things, but your risk of dying in a car accident is about 1 in 77. In a population of 1,000 people, that means about 13 people are going to die. Increase that by 90%, and now you've got about 25 people dying, an increase of 12 deaths. Your risk of dying of heart disease, though, is about 1 in 4. So out of 1,000 people, 250 are going to die of heart disease. If you increase that by 10%, now you've got 275 people dying, an increase of 25 so if you just wanted to minimize your chance of death, you would take the 90% increase of a car accident and maybe just walk everywhere.
As an aside, that math even surprised me. I at first just threw out random ridiculous figures thinking that I would have to adjust them after doing the math. But no, heart disease really is that fucking deadly. It's so deadly that you can't even compare it to the thing that everyone compares risk of death to. A la, you're more likely to die in the car on the way to the airport than you are to die in a plane crash. Well, you're way more likely to die of heart disease. <laughs> Uh, so the fact is that overall, the most impactful takeaway from this study is that subjects who ate meat other than just fish were much more likely to develop heart disease than pescatarians, vegetarians, or vegans. However, that's not much of a surprise. Uh, many studies have shown this over the years. Also, it's worth noting that we don't know cause and effect. Uh, we don't know if there's some other lifestyle choice that meat eaters tend to make that contributes to that figure. So that's why the hemorrhagic stroke finding is more interesting. Vegans and vegetarians tend to be healthier people in general. Uh, they tend to be more mindful of what they eat since it's not the default in our culture, meaning, you know, this study was done in the UK, so that culture. And they also tend to be more physically active. Uh, so it's interesting that despite the fact that vegans and vegetarians tend to be healthier than meat eaters, they have a slight increase in this one type of stroke. Why could that be? Well, this actually still fits in with other studies, including several Japanese studies that the authors actually cite in this uh, paper, showing a possible link between lower consumption of animal products and higher risk of stroke. The authors point out that this might be due to some vegetarians and vegans having very low cholesterol or a lack of the vitamin B12, which is primarily found in animal products and is responsible for the health of your blood cells, among many other really important tasks. It's derived from animal products, but vegetarians can get it from milk, cheese, and eggs, and vegans can get it in fortified foods like cereals. Um... Yes, by the way, unlike many supplements, B12 is perfectly fine for humans to consume outside of where we would normally find it. It's just as effective to get it in fortified foods. Um, the problem is that you need to pay close attention to what you're eating in order to make sure you're getting B12. And not everyone on a vegan or vegetarian diet knows how important that is. And of course, it might be something else entirely, some lifestyle choice that happens to go along with being a vegan or a vegetarian in many cases. We don't know, and that's why we need more research to tease that out. So in the meanwhile, please don't use this study as an excuse to not reduce your meat intake. Uh, that will pretty much always be a healthy decision for you and the planet. Just make sure that if you're vegetarian, or especially if you're vegan, you're getting all of your necessary vitamins and minerals. They are important. Um, oh, and go ahead and you can send me your Impossible Whoppers still. Just because.